All right, it's Friday afternoon, October 30th. I'm here at the Glen Haven Fire Station Number 1 with Chief Kevin Zagorda. And he's been, of course, here the whole time defending his community. And I wanted to get, have him get a chance to talk to folks, including his residents here in the Glen Haven and Retreat area, about the current conditions and current hazards. Chief? So since the snowstorm, we've been, we've been present every day. We've been patrolling the area, keeping an eye on the areas where there was previously heat and fire. And uh, so far this week, within the retreat itself, we haven't seen any smoke. We haven't seen any heat in those, in those areas that we were working on uh, before the snowstorm. That's all good news. Today, we actually went back uh, up and over the saddle and down to the Chile Boys Camp to have a look down there at, at what things look like. Uh, basically, the Chile Boys Camp doesn't look any different than it did a month ago, except for snow on the ground. Uh, but the road to get down there is very treacherous right now. I fully understand why they're not sending firefighters back there at this point in time because you got to be able to get people out quickly in an emergency or in the case of an injury. So our top priority is always firefighter safety and I understand why we're taking the approach we're taking there. But I can tell you I have not seen any smoke back in the North Fork drainage from any of the vantage points we have here in Glen Haven. Uh, including up at the top of the switchbacks, McGraw Ranch, all over the retreat. Uh, things, things are looking good back there. Okay, great. Thanks, Chief. And you have some of your firefighters with you here. You have Jeff to your right. Yep. Jeff was uh, one of the firefighters working on structure protection and direct attack inside the retreat. Um, he and several of the other firefighters saved multiple homes in between Miller Fork and Bulwark Ridge Roads when things were hot and heavy back in there. And uh, those guys did an excellent job. Okay, and then you have a couple trainees with you. Do you want to introduce them? Yeah, this is Gabe and Matt. Uh, Gabe's been uh, attending fire department training since he was about nine years old. Yep. His father's on the department, former chief. Uh, so Gabe is 16 now, so he's officially a trainee. And Matt is a grandson of one of our other firefighters. He is an Eagle Scout, and for his Eagle Scout project, he has funded an addition to our second station in the retreat, Station 2. Oh my gosh. And we uh, halted construction on that because of the Cameron Peak fire. So we have a couple of uh, stud walls put up and that's about as far as we got. But Matt and Gabe, uh, you know, when the fire first entered Glenhaven, we had firefighters working on protecting structures, kind of in the line of fire. Matt and Gabe were, were back doing more passive structure protection putting up sprinklers around houses, making sure there were any flammables around the houses. They were both on crews with more experienced firefighters, directly supervision, everything they did, they did with their parents' permission. We made sure they were ultra safe, but that, they did a ton of work. Fantastic, I know everybody's proud of them. I know that folks have been wondering, they want us to tell more success stories of what we actually saved. Oftentimes it's the focus on the heartbreak of all the structures lost. I know that I live in a fire scar where we lose 50 homes every four years, apparently, yeah. 2015, 2019 in my neighborhood. Yep. But you can focus on some of those successes. Yeah, big shout out to our homeowners. Um, we got recognized as a Firewise community two months before the fire started. And as a result of that, you have to have education events for your homeowners. You have to show that you do so much mitigation work. And our homeowners stepped up, did a lot of work on their defensible spaces, and many homes were saved because of that. That very first day, we sat at the lookout point, looked down over the retreat, saw smoke, saw flames, couldn't see the structures. We saw propane tanks venting and flames shooting 20 feet in the air and we were very concerned that we lost many homes. And the following day when the smoke kind of cleared and we were able to get back in there, we lost far fewer homes than we expected because of the work those homeowners did. That's a part of neighbors helping neighbors and neighbors helping these firefighters, right? One of the best ways you can help firefighters is create defensible space. Absolutely. And so the community right now, of course, still in mandatory. We're still in mandatory evacuation. Um, primarily because of the unknowns associated with what we call the North Fork slop over. So we're hoping uh, this slow melt on the snow is, is helping to wet the fuels, slow that fire down, the colder weather at night. Uh, we do have some wind moving in this evening and tomorrow. I think that'll be a critical indicator. Um, and you know, we're, 
we think the efforts of the team, along with the change in the seasons, will uh, hopefully bring this thing to an end soon. Great, thank you. Well, I know on behalf of the fire team and all the community that's been supporting all the firefighters, we want to say thank you. I do have thank you cards in my rig that the locals have been sending out that they wanted to get to the firefighters. So we'll get them to your crew and you can help hand them out as well. Awesome. And again, anything left to say to the public that's still anxious to get back home? Uh, people are working to get you back in as, as soon as they can, but obviously they want to be safe and, and be safe on the conservative side. Great. Thanks so much, Chief. Really appreciate it. You're welcome.